so much for joining this live broadcast where we're going to have an awesome topic all about graduation day. And that's all about graduating from the current craft cutter and um, home iron that you have now and uh, looking for equipment that's really going to advance what you're doing now and be able to reach more customers. Before we do dive into that uh, topic, I'd like to show you guys this week's look of the week. This was submitted by Kristen Ritchie from Duncan, Oklahoma on our Stalls Show and Tell that happens every Saturday on the Stalls All Things Heat Printing Facebook page. I really like this look. Uh, she did with this with our CAD Cup Premium Plus with a mixture of fashion film there so that she could get that cream color in there that Premium Plus doesn't offer currently. So she did mix in some fashion film, but I just really love the detail and the retro design that she did with this. Yeah, pretty retro. <laughs> <coughs> That's five years after my graduation, so yeah. I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, so this is a really cool look. This is something that's really been very popular in the apparel decoration industry from a design standpoint and even from an apparel standpoint. Or just anything that's really retro, anywhere from the 70s to the 90s, is just we're seeing a lot more of and in being incorporated into our designs and our apparel. So, um, again, thank you guys for joining us. I see a lot of you commenting in. Hi, everyone that's commenting in. I thank you. Uh, be sure if you are joining us to comment, let us know where you're joining us from, and of course, like the broadcast. Sure. Before we get into our discussion, I'd like to go over some announcements that we have. Next week on the 20th, we're doing our workshop Wednesdays at all of our stall showroom locations. All right, so we'll be there doing the new heat printing ideas for the summer. Also leading a little bit into the fall for any fall fanware that you'll be printing for school, uh, starting to come back around. And then these are all ideas that are really gonna spark ideas and apparel and designs and uh, print trends that are very popular in the industry right now. So being able to keep up with that is ultimately gonna spark sales with your current customers and maybe even reaching new customers. So those will be hosted at our locations in Arizona, Corona, Florida, Michigan, and Texas. If you guys have not signed up for that yet, you can find that on the Stalls website on our Stalls events page. So be sure to check that out. And if you're looking to attend, just go ahead and sign up there. Um, some trade shows that are coming up. We have NBM Cleveland this month, the 15th and the 16th. We'll be at booth 604, but we'll also be doing educational sem seminars. Our very own Mario Webb will be there doing education, so you can either attend his class or just visit our booth to see what's new. We'll also be at ASI Chicago uh, July 25th and 26th. So if you don't get to make it to NBM Cleveland, we'll be at that show uh, next month. So you can join Bob. He'll actually be doing an educational seminar there. And then, of course, we will have a booth as well, as and, always. <laughs> and it's a great town to eat in. Oh, yeah. Bob is like the food guru for the company. We always go to him whenever we want to try something new in a city. <laughs> and it shows. <laughs> all right, so we can go ahead and dive into our discussion. Um, and it's really all about the importance of upgrading. So a lot of people that start out in the industry uh, they start smart, they start out slow, and they try to get their hands on doing some trial and error with small craft cutters like the Silhouette and the Cricut, even the Brother Scan and Cut. And then also get into a little bit of heat transfer vinyl where they're using their home iron to apply it onto apparel. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the importance, you think, of upgrading once they've already dove into that and really getting to the next step? Well, it really... You get to the point where you've got more than you can handle. These are great little cutters. Don't get me mm -hmm. wrong. People have done a great job. And there's a lot of creativity and ingenuity happening with these smaller cutters. But they are smaller cutters, and they are somewhat slower, especially the ones that actually utilize a mat. So it's going to slow you down somewhat. So when your production, when your orders kind of exceed your amount of production, it might be time to, to look to the next level. Right, and that's going to be a couple cutters that are very popular in the industry that we'll be going over here 
a little later. Uh, and then not only is it going to speed up your production and help you reach a larger capacity, but it also gives you more opportunity because not only are you able to uh, do heat transfer vinyl, but there are a lot of other transfers out there uh, that are great for different job types. So you could be getting requests for 50 to 100 t-shirts per order and heat transfer vinyl is just going to take up too much time in order to fulfill that job with. So upgrading even from a home iron to a heat press is going to allow you to look at different transfer types that are going to allow you to reach more of a customer base. So sure. not turning away jobs that are uh, too big for you to handle with just a cutter. Exactly. All right. So that'll uh, open up there. And then <coughs> I guess it's time to talk about when is the right time to graduate from your uh, craft cutter and your home iron. And it really comes down to whether you're getting requests from your customers right. to fulfill jobs. So if you're selling your heat transfer vinyl projects or jobs that you're creating, then that's whenever you want to start thinking of, all right, this is becoming more of a business mm -hmm. as opposed to just a hobby or something I'm doing on the side. Uh, so now I need something that's going to allow me to fulfill more jobs. Yeah, you've obviously done a real good job with friends and family mm -hmm. and the words got out there. They love your designs, they love what you've done, your creative use of different types of materials on different fabrics, all those things. And that has you know, increased your, your customer base. And so people are coming to you looking for this, ooh, I wasn't ready for this. It's no longer just friends and family. Mm -hmm. Now it's become almost a business. And maybe right. it is a business. Maybe it's been a business the whole time. Now it's time to you know, be more productive, uh, efficient, production efficient uh, by having the right equipment. Right. And not only is it going to help you uh, fulfill more orders and get more customers ultimately, but it's going to help you with durability and giving your customers quality things that they're asking for. That way you get those repeat customers that are like, you know what, they did a great job on my first order with them. I'm going to go back for my next order. Yeah. When you're using the home iron, and it's a, people do it all the time, and it's, it's not a bad way to go, but especially on larger designs where you're not covering the entire image with your iron, one, first of all, do I have the right temperature for some of these mm -hmm. jobs? You know, am I, am I really, do I really know that this cotton linen setting or wool is the right setting? Is it actually at 365 degrees that I need uh, for a goof proof transfer? Mm -hmm. Or have I dialed it into the right 302 or whatever the particular HTV is looking for? So having the right temperature is, is one thing and, and people have adjusted that nicely. But the other thing is getting good coverage. Have I hit every piece of that transfer design? There's no way to really know that. So what it makes me do is work really hard and go over it and over it and over it and making sure that I've got every little bit and piece of that design covered nicely with the right amount of pressure, it just slows you down. And so you're not going to get nearly enough done in the right amount of time. Right. And within this industry, there are so many heat transfer vinyl types and screen print types and even types and even transfer paper types. Mm -hmm. So all of those are going to require different time temperatures and pressures. So even with a home iron, it's going to be hard to gauge how much pressure you're exactly you're actually getting with that because uh, there's so many PSIs that you need for mm -hmm. each transfer and heat presses dial that out for you so that you don't have to sit there with all your weight on top of the home iron just to make sure you're getting a firm pressure. All right, so uh, definitely with durability and then just saving time. Like you mentioned, there are cutters a step above um, the craft cutters, the 15 inch small cutters that you typically use a mat with and they run on a motor that's going to allow you to get uh, more designs and work with more material. So whenever we're working with those cutter mats, or the mats on the craft cutters, we have to sheet down our material to make sure it's 12 inches in width or only purchase sheets of material. Mm -hmm. um, and that really limits how many designs we can get with just one cut. So uh, with the um, vinyl cutters that are a step up from that, they're typically 24 inches, but not all 24 inch cutters work with a servo motor. Mm -hmm. But a 24 inch cutter that works with a servo motor is what you want to look for in order to speed up your production time and cutting designs. Yeah, using a servo motor versus a stepper motor, that's all electronic type of stuff, gizmos that mm -hmm. are in there. The servo motor is going to be a little more expensive than a stepper motor, uh, but what you get with that is consistent cutting. 
it's going to react to the resistance of the heat transfer vinyl regardless of what type of material you have and give you a clean, even cut every time. It's going to be more durable, so your investment is going to be, it's going to last a lot longer, so they're a much more durable type of cutters themselves. Forget about the durability of the transfer, but the, the, the cutter itself. And they're actually quieter. Um, yeah. yeah. They're significantly quieter and, and noticeably faster. One all thing I also like about a, a roll type of cut like this is just that. It works off of a roll, so I no longer am cutting into sheets. Mm -hmm. So I can gang up a lot of my designs all using the same color material, or if I've got uh, the same design over and over, I can let that cut all unattended cuttings uh, so I can actually be weeding my designs while these, these are cutting, or I'm at the heat press applying those ones that are there. It gives me a nice production cycle. Right. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the cutters in, that are popular in, in the industry that a lot of people have had a lot of success with. So a lot of people that have started out with Silhouette and Cricut or Brothers Scan and Cut ultimately end up looking for a great brand that has durability and lasts a long time for them to really run a business off mm -hmm. of. And one of the two most popular uh, is the Roland GS24 in Graftech C6000 Plus. So here we have in front of us <laughs> the Roland GS24. It's a 24 inch cutter and like Bob mentioned earlier with the servo motors, this is a great cutter. It has the servo motor. It allows me to feed in rolls of material anywhere from 12 inches to 15 inches to 20 inches. All right, so those are the most common sizes for rolls of heat transfer vinyl, and those are easily fed in through this cutter. Now, this, in a lot of people's opinion, is the most user-friendly whenever upgrading because there's not too many features in there where it gets confusing, but just enough where you're able to work easily with it and be able to produce jobs easily. Yeah, and the Roland brand it. has been respected for mm -hmm. years. It's uh, They just come with a very... Actually, the warranty is a little better on this particular cutter mm -hmm. uh, than some of the other ones. gives you an extra year than, than other cutter brands will offer you. And that speaks a lot to their dependability and uh, reliability. So I want to make sure that the cutter is going to cut for me. It's going to perform um, every time. And so I, I really count on the rolling for that. Yeah, and just like any other cutter in the industry, anywhere from the smaller cutters to the larger format cutters, you are going to have to change out the blade and the cutting strip every so often. A little more so up front whenever you're doing some trial and error. It's just what happens whenever you work with a new piece of equipment. There's always going to be a trial and error there. So you are going to have to um, swap out the blade and the cutting strip, but that's really the only... Yeah, the only maintenance is the blade yeah. and the cutting strip. And the good news is, too, if you're upgrading, if it is graduation day, cap in the air, <laughs> uh, then you kind of understand the principles of cutting to start with. So mm -hmm. you're kind of doing that now, just on a smaller scale and a little less uh, performance base, but you still understand the, the blade depth and, and force and that type of thing. Right. All right, so that is the Roland GS24, and then we have on the side of Bob over there the Graftech CE6000 Plus. So this is the newest cutter that Graftech has recently come out with. It works very similarly to the Roland GS24, and a lot of people really like this cutter as well. Uh, there are pretty much the same features that the Roland GS24 has, but if you are working specifically with a Mac computer, this is the style of cutter you want to look at. Yeah, the, the GraphTech, it boasts um, a lot more features, some of which, many of which you may or may not use, including tangential emulation. It does track longer than the Roland does as far as how much material will roll out and come back and keep it straight. But in my mind, when I'm doing heat transfer vinyl, I'm going to let it get close to the ground and then cut it off so I can actually start weeding these things as well. So unless you're doing like pinstriping and things like that for cars, that tracking ability is not, is not the biggest thing for me. Because also, you know, if a blade starts to wear, starts to get dull, then some of those designs aren't cut out perfectly. So that, that's a bonus. I and mean, it does, it, honestly, between the two cutters, they do the same job. It's mm -hmm. now a matter of do I have a Mac? Uh, do I like the little bit us more user friendliness of the Roland? Um, it's a Coke, Pepsi, Ford, Chevy type of scenario. Uh, both are great cutters. You wouldn't go wrong purchasing either one. All right, so I am seeing some uh, questions come in, and one <coughs> of the most common is what are the price points for these cutters for the Roland GS24? Oh boy, uh, a lot of times since I've looked at a price list, they're both going to be in there between that sixteen to eighteen hundred dollar range, uh, depending on you know where you go and and what the special is, et cetera. They're going to be in that neighborhood. Yeah, and I will say 
the best bet if you are looking to upgrade to a cutter is going to the show floor at any of the upcoming trade shows and purchasing there because that is where you definitely get the best deals. Always. Uh, but they are only about $100 different yep. between the two cutters. So you're not looking at one that has a lower price point than the other really. Mm -hmm. Stands are included in both cases. Mm -hmm. And if I can find anything else that's different, the Roland has wheels. <laughs> All right, uh, so moving on, uh, some upgrading options for your home iron. So if you guys have any questions about the cutters uh, as we're moving on, just go ahead and comment them in. If we don't get to all of your questions um, during the live broadcast, we'll follow up after the broadcast and answer all your questions. Uh, so for some upgrading options for your home iron. So this is a common question that we get, whether it's on our live broadcast or even at trade shows whenever we're talking with customers in person. Uh, where do I go for my home iron? What's the next step up? And a lot of people want to know the biggest difference between the $300 presses that they can find on Amazon and the industry grade presses that are a little more expensive. Yeah, in my mind, if you're going to step up from your home iron, it's not from the Black & Decker to the Sunbeam, it's going to a legitimate heat press. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are a lot of, in, in, in our business, in our company, we call them throwaway presses. They're, they're presses that will last a little while and perform marginally, but getting service and making sure that you can, you know, this is gonna last you for, for the life of your business. Um, that's probably the difference between that and the, like you said, the commercial grade type of press that, that Stalls represents. Right, and that press is known as the Hotronic. So I'll go ahead over here and start showing you uh, one of the most common styles of presses in the industry, and that is a clam style. So this is on a stand and has some shelves attached to it, but typically this can just go on a tabletop. And that's why a lot of people really like the clam style is because it has a small footprint and they can easily uh, take it to an on-site event that they might be printing at. So uh, it's easy to just take somewhere. It's more of a uh, lighter weight than some of the other presses in the industry. So a lot of people do like this, especially if you're working at home, whether it's a home office or even in your garage, they like that small footprint. You don't have to worry about uh, how much space that you have. So this can just easily be set on a table. All right, and they also like being able to have interchangeable platens, and that's something that Hotronics is really known for, is being able to swap out the platen that you're seeing here so that you can easily thread on a garment or an item and get a nice flat pressure anytime that you're working with something. All right, so the clam style just closes down, and then once it's locked in place, it'll just auto pop open. So it has an auto release feature. Not all clams in the industry do have that feature. This is a Hotronics special press. It's just an auto open clam, all right? But it still works just like any other clam where you're actually working under the heat and clamming it down. Now in the back of the press is where we're going to gauge all of our time, temperature, and pressure. All right, so right now I can see my temperature. I know that that's the temperature I need for the goof proof transfer that I'm going to be applying here. And I can change all of that by working off of this menu. So there's a mode button and I can change it from 365 up and down depending on the temperature I need for my transfer and then change the amount of dwell time that I need for my transfer to apply. So I know that my transfer is 365 degrees and it needs to apply for a total of four seconds. Now I need to know how much pressure I'm going to be at. And that's what this little red number down here is in the bottom right hand corner of the panel. And that's gonna let me know how much my pressure is gauged at. But I manually set my pressure by twisting this knob on the top of my heating element here. All right, so the reason that we talk about Hotronics and uh, maybe some other popular ones in the industry like Hicks and Geonite is because they are made at a professional grade where all of the coils are aligned right next to each other in this upper heating element. So we're guaranteeing no cold spots. That's not something that you can get with, uh, like Bob said, a throwaway press or any of the $300 presses that you're seeing on Amazon. All right, so no cold spots. So I know I'm gonna be getting a durable transfer anytime I work with any of my products. Okay, so we'll go ahead and demo this so that you guys can see how it all works. All right, so right now I have an interchangeable platen on here. This is the 11 by 15. It does come with a standard 16 by 20. Now, typically I would have this platen 
turned in a portrait view, but because my transfer is a little bit larger than that, I'm gonna have to rotate this into a landscape view so that I can get my transfer to fit accordingly and still be able to load on this youth garment without stretching the material too much, All right? So the idea here is to get a nice flat pressure. So I wanna make sure that thick collar scheme or the collar seam is completely off of the platen. I will still have some seams from this raglan t-shirt dropping on the side of my platen here, but that's not gonna cause me uneven pressure since I'm just working with the center chest. All right, so I'll just place that down. And I won't need a cover sheet for this application. I know I'm at a nice firm pressure because it's reading out at a seven. It applies for four seconds. Goof proof is a hot peel. So I can go ahead and peel this back. And I know that I have a nice durable transfer for a local t-ball baseball group, okay? All right, so that is the auto clamp. And if you want to find more <coughs> educational videos on there, you can, or on that specific press, you can find those on our YouTube channel or even on the stalls uh, website under educational videos. But I'll go ahead and toss it off to Bob so that he can show you the features of our Air Fusion. Okay, uh, I do want to mention one thing about the clamps. There is a step down uh, as far as price and features when it comes to the clamp style press. The Max Press uh, will do the same type of job just without the auto open feature uh, and without a couple of the other bells and whistles. But the same interchangeable lower platens, the same type of heating element that's, that's non-stick on the, uh, the upper element, interchangeable lower platens, all those things hold true. That's on all the, all the presses that Hotronics manufactures. We're going to look at the next level. Actually, we're going to kind of skip a level, but we're talking about the Fusion family. Now, the standard Fusion is our best-selling press. I don't have it represented here because we actually have the Air Fusion, which is kind of a double graduation, kind of like your master's degree of, uh, of heat presses here. Uh, but we will talk about the Fusion in general. The standard Fusion is a manual press, and it does have the same interchangeable lower platen. It still locks down manually, but the difference here is it actually swings away, manually swings away. What that does, and I'm going to show you using the Air Fusion, how this opens up, it's going to give me <coughs> free access, heat free access right here on my lower platen. It allows me to do detailed work if I'm setting individual rhinestones, little things like that, without having to crouch and reach underneath a hot surface. Uh, again, platens are interchangeable, the same type of throat, uh, wide open threadability on the, on the fusion line. Uh, with the clamp style press, you will have to add some sort of stand, whether it be the, uh, the counter caddy or the freestanding caddy that you see over there, to allow that threadability. This one's built in. Now, the difference between this air fusion and the standard fusion, as you can see, it runs off an air compressor. So, talk about master's degree. Maybe we're getting to our doctorate here. Now, that'd be the duel. But, um, I don't have to worry about pressure because when I look into my menu, now all the Fusion family have this uh, very robust control panel. In here are the preset um, recipes, so to speak, for all the different types of transfers that are available or that, that are most commonly used, and you can add your own. So you can build your own custom uh, settings within here if you don't like what the manufacturer does, shame on you. But this gives you the option to pick and choose those, and in there it will actually preset my pressure because the air, f um, the air compressor is actually, uh, the control panel in here sets the pressure automatically regardless of the thickness of the material that I've put in there. Now. Also, the Fusion has gotten smarter, and there's a whole lot of features there. We're not going to be able to touch them all here today, but you can definitely look into this and go on to either the stalls.com or the hotronics.com. But I will tell you that it does connect to Wi-Fi, so this is going to give you reporting, report capabilities for all of your different type of presses, all of your operators, if you're, going, if you're growing and growing, you're adding more and more uh, presses to your business. You're gonna be able to see the reporting as to how long this, this machine was idle, um, how many non-conformance type of presses, who did something that wasn't part of the, you know, wasn't part of the routine, we're kind of skipping over a, a preheat or somebody didn't use the right temperature or pressure. We're able to track that nicely. It also has diagnostics. So if there's something wrong with a press, something very common, and a sensor wire comes off, it'll actually give you in the status bar up on top here, it'll tell you exactly what's going on right now. So that helps as far as our technicians are concerned. It's gonna speed up that process. Something happened to my press. It happens, something happens eventually. Uh, they're able to take care of it very, very quickly. So that's, you know, again, we, we stand behind the Blue Ribbon 24 seven support that, that Hotronics offers with all the presses. So love the Air Fusion because it is hands-free operation. 
when I say hands free, but I don't have to work too hard. Let's just do a quick, we'll do the exact same transfer that Jenna did. I'll do mine better. <laughs> I'm going to step on the foot pedal that's going to swing it open. I already figured out that it needs to be in the landscape because I have the same shirt with the same design. So we're going to go ahead and thread it on. Love the, having the quick slip pad protector on here too, especially when you're doing threading onto the, onto the um, lower platen. It's going to protect this lower um, platen from deteriorating prematurely. It also makes it so much easier to slide this on. Without that, this could be kind of grabbing and slowing things down and um, you know, kind of basically we're trying to pick up production. So as usual, we will slide our shirt all the way on. That helps pretend like our shoulders in here. That keeps it nice and straight. Now let's kind of pull it back just like Jenna did. Uh, we're going to keep that collar off of the platen itself. I'm going to go ahead and step on the pedal. We're going to preheat. It's already built in. Four seconds. And there we go. And it swings away. So as far as fatigue goes, this particular press you're just going to be next to none in the, in the long, long term where you're doing multiple after multiple. Always inspect your transfer, making sure that it looks good. No one scratched any of the ink off. Make sure I'm going the right direction. Uh, nothing worse than an upside down design. Again, no cover sheet necessary with a uh, goof proof transfer. And goof proof transfers, like we talked about, this is when you're doing volume. You're, you're, if you're doing two or three of these, absolutely cut it with your, with your vinyl cutter and weed it and apply it. But if I've got 50 or more of these, it absolutely makes sense, especially on a single uh, color design to get those ordered from Transfer Express. Love the hot peel feature. And a completed garment just that quickly. Oh, I guarantee it looks better than hers. That's it. All right, so uh, great demo on the Air Fusion. If you guys are looking for more educational, in-depth demonstrations of all of the heat press types that we offer, definitely visit the Stalls TV YouTube channel because we go over in-depth each and every single one of those heat presses so that you guys can really get an idea of how these heat presses can benefit you. Uh, one question I did see from Carrie is, what uh, do you recommend for a starter press? And it really depends on mm. where you plan on going with your business. Uh, if you could foresee yourself having a ton of capacity that uh, you need to uh, really take a hold of, mm -hmm. then you definitely want to go more uh, on the uh, a higher grade of a heat press. So definitely either uh, if you're looking for more of a lower end clam style, like you said, there is another option from the auto clam. It doesn't have the auto feature, but it's called a Max and it is manufactured by Hotronics. It works just as well. It just doesn't have that auto open feature, but I do recommend any clam styles. And if you see yourself really wanting to, to go a step up from there, then definitely the Fusion. Yeah, it, there's a lot of things to take in consideration when it comes to picking a press. Mm -hmm. One, of course, price point is one thing. Do I have a budget? Yeah, everybody's got a budget, but eventually get over the sticker shock, you buy the right press. Ultimately, how much space do I have mm -hmm. in my shop? Do, what is the conditions that I'm going to be working in? Do I need to move this thing around? Does it need to be portable? Um, just how much volume am I going to go through this thing? Is it something that's going to wear me out? Do I plan on pressing 500 shirts a day? If that's the case, you know, I can quickly get tired of this and get a little bit weary if I'm doing something that's going to work me really hard. So maybe something in the auto. I like the auto open feature because I can lock it down and walk away. allows me to multitask because most of us at this stage of the game, if we're looking at just graduating, are kind of a, a, a one-stop shop. We're doing everything ourselves. We're wearing a lot of different hats. So you want to be able to step away from the press, something that will auto release. So that being said, first press, this might not be the best this might be the best option for you. I'm talking about the auto open clamp. It does come in different sizes. And we didn't mention the, uh, in the max line, it starts with 11 by 15, moves to a 15 by 15, and then a 16 by 20. Uh, the auto open clamp, Hotronics, same offering, except for the 15 by 15, and it's now a 16 by 16. So there are, I can't answer the, which is the best way to go. You need to look at all the different features and, and look at which, what your needs are and where you're heading in the future. Make sure we, this one lasts for a while. 
I do like, like Jenna mentioned earlier, I do like starting with a 16 by 20, not because it's the most expensive of the three. I just don't want to ever be cheated and say, I can't fit this design on my press. I have to press it twice. I could get something crooked. And having the uh, lower, optional lower platens, interchangeable lower platens, can allow you to fit all different sizes and shapes of garments. So don't have the clean answer for you, but I can give you a lot of criteria to help you make the right decision. Right. Kristen asked if the uh, lower heated platen is available for the Fusion yet. As of right now, it is still only compatible with the 16 by 20 auto clam. If you guys are wondering what the heated lower platen is, you guys can find videos on that on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, if we didn't get to your questions today, we will follow up after the broadcast. A couple more announcements. We will have a live class on the 21st. So join us back on at noon on the 21st for that, and then our next morning show will be on the 25th. I know there's some confusion from uh, people that uh, love watching the morning show. Uh, it is every other week now, so it'll be twice uh, a month, all right? So you can see us back here on the 25th and join us for a great new topic. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time.